Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to discuss section 11.6, finding the area of circles, sectors, and segments. The first two formulas here on your formula sheet that you need to fill in are area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and area of a sector, so the measure of the arc over 360 times the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Both of these are reviewed from previous chapters, but please go ahead and fill those in on your uh, formula sheet. Then I would also like you to go to the next two examples, find the area of the shaded sector for both of these, for A and B, pause, go ahead and work both of those out, and then push play to resume and check your answers. Okay, so here's the answer for part A. So the area of the sector is 270 over 360 times uh, the area of the circle. Again, because we know this is a right angle, we know that is an arc of 270. And going on to B, so since we have an inscribed angle, the arc in our case here is 60. So we have 60 over 360 times the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. So we get 6 pi. The next example is finding the area of the segment of a circle. So please also go to your formula sheet. This is a picture again of the area of a segment of a circle. So the formula for this would be to find the area of the sector, which we know is the measure of the arc over 360 times pi r squared minus the area of the triangle. So let me draw a little representation of what this would actually look like. So if I have the sector, so in our case it would be the slice of the circle. I'm going to find the area of that and I'm going to subtract off the triangle. Now the triangle is formed with the chord and the two radii. So we're going to find the area of that triangle. If we subtract the area of the sector minus the triangle, that will leave this segment, which is formed by the arc and the chord. So it would form that segment with the arc and the chord. Okay. So the very first thing that we need to do is we have to be able to find the area of the sector, so we need to find the radius. So we, if we draw in the radius, and again we want to draw it in where it would be helpful for us, and we can draw in our triangle there. Sometimes it's helpful to draw the triangle outside of that diagram. So we know this is 8. At 30 degrees, we, this is the central angle, so that would be 30. Therefore, when we draw the line in to the chord, it's not only going to be perpendicular, it's going to bisect it, and it's going to bisect the angle, which gives us a 15 degree angle there. So at this point in time, if we're looking for the radius, knowing that this is 15 degrees, we can use SOHCAHTOA. 15 degrees, 4 is opposite, where R is the hypotenuse. So in that case, we're going to be using SOHCAHTOA. So sine of the angle, which is 15. Opposite of that side is 4. Opposite of that angle is 4. And then the hypotenuse is R. If we cross multiply, remember our means and extremes. We get R times sine of 15 equals 4. And then we would like to divide by sine of 15. So we can come over to our calculator here. Move this over. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So we have 4 divided by sine 15. And we get that to be 15.45. We'll go ahead and just round to two decimal places. So now the area of the, again we're going to do the area of the sector minus area of the triangle. So area of the sector would be in our case here 30 over 360 times pi r squared. So we get 15.45 squared. And if you go ahead and calculate that using your calculator, you would get that to be 19.89 pi. So before we go ahead and finish the calculations here, we do need to find the area of the triangle next. 
So to find the area of the triangle, referring back up here to the entire triangle, in this case we have a base of eight. We do need to determine the height, h. Now knowing that r is 15.45, we can go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. Four squared plus h squared equals 15.45 squared. Again, going ahead and using your calculator, subtracting over, uh, squaring the 15.45 squared, subtracting over the four squared, and taking the square root of both sides, you get the hypotenuse, I'm sorry, the height to be 14.92. So the area formula of this triangle, one half base times height. So we'll add one half, base being the eight, height, which we just found to be 14.92. Again, using your calculator there, you would get that to be 59.68. And at this point in time, you can see, obviously, um, we're having to round here. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculator. So this is the area of the shaded region. Plug that entire thing into your calculator, and you get that to be approximately 2.81. Okay. Moving on to our next example. Okay, so here we have the radius of the largest circle is six. So in other words, from the center point all the way over to the larger circle, the largest green circle, that is six. So in our case here, we know the radius of the two smaller circles would be congruent, so each part of those would be three. So again, the area of the shaded in this case, we want to think about taking the area of the larger circle, and we want to subtract the area of the two, so we've got to put a two in front of that, smaller circles. Okay. So the area of the larger circle would be pi, and the radius of the largest circle again is six, so times six squared minus two times the area of the smaller circle, so pi r squared, and the smaller circle's radius is three, so that'd be times three squared. 36 pi minus 18 pi gives us 18 pi for the area of the shaded region. Example C. Here we're going to assume regular polygon. So when we find the area of this shaded region, we're going to take the area of the circle, which is the figure outside, minus the area of the pentagon. So we first need to figure out the radius of the circle. The radius of the circle here, again, we're going to draw that to the corner. So that would be the radius of our circle. Okay. So in order to find that radius, we're going to also have to draw in the apothem, which will make a right angle. So we'll have our apothem there, which I'll call A. And we need to figure out the angles of the pentagon. So remember the exterior angle formula? 360 divided by 5, which is going to give us 72. Now that is also, each of these arcs are congruent, so all the arcs are 72 degrees which means our central angles are 72 degrees. Therefore, when we draw in our apothem and our radius, that would divide that, bisect that angle and make that 36 degrees. So we know we have this is eight, the apothem bisects the side of the pentagon, so we have each of those are four. So again, using SOHCAHTOA, we're able to find the radius, so we can find the area of the circle. So again, SOHCAHTOA, we have our angle 36, four is opposite, and the radius is the hypotenuse, so again, we can use sine. So sine of 36 equals four over r, okay? Means extremes, you should be able to just simply switch those means and extremes, so we can switch the r and the sine of 36. 
Again, plugging that into our calculator. Let's go ahead and refer to our calculator at this point in time. We have 4 divided by sine of 36. And we can go ahead and round this to one decimal place this time. So we get our radius to be equal to 6.8. So going back up to our formula here, area of the circle is going to be pi times 6.8 squared, which is going to give us 46.24 pi. Now we have to find the area of the pentagon. Well, we're part of the way there. We have on this one, we have to get uh, one half the apothem times the perimeter. So using our triangle, we know the radius is 6.8. So using Pythagorean theorem, we have 6.8 squared equals 4 squared plus the apothem squared. Again, solving that, squaring the 6.8 and subtracting the 4 squared. Taking the square root of that, we would get the apothem to be 5.5. So going back up to the area of the pentagon, we have 1 half times the apothem times the perimeter. We know each side is 8 and we have 5 sides, so 8 times 5, in other words 40. So 40 times 5.5 times a half would give us 110. And let's go ahead and round this and we can round this to one decimal place. So we would get 35 point one approximately. And our last example, in this case here, um, this is the area of the shaded region. In our case here we do have, we have a square. So we have the area of a square minus the area of, now let's take a look at what we have here. We want to find the shaded region. So if we take a look at what I'm highlighting here in red, this is a quarter of a circle. And I have one, two, three, four. Four quarters of a circle. So in other words, I'm going to have just area of one circle if I put those all together. So the area of the squared is going to be side squared, so 10 squared, minus the area, now these are all sectors, but again, when we put these all together, that is going to form one circle. So we'll have pi times radius squared, and our radius for each of those would be 5. Let's leave this in exact form, so it would be 100 minus 25 pi. Okay, and this concludes the notes for section 11.6.